Welcome to the Victorian Parent Council VPC Parent Podcast Series. VPC is a registered charity organisation dedicated to everyone who support parents in educating their children. I'm Jackie Vanderveld, your host today. This term, we're delving into all things NAPLAN. And today we're specifically going to be looking at adjustments that can be made for students requiring them as part of some special provisions for the NAPLAN test. Last time we spoke with Mary Kerber and she gave us some really great advice on how parents can prepare their Year 3 and Year 5 students for the NAPLAN exams and we've invited her back today to continue that conversation around adjustments. And welcome back Mary. Thank you Jackie. Mary, last time we spoke about NAPLAN and uh, what uh, adjustments uh, might be available particularly for students who have some learning support needs, you outlined some of the possible adjustments as per the uh, the NAPLAN protocols that are available for parents to have a look at on the website. Uh, we thought it'd be beneficial um, to perhaps uh, outline, well not outline, but discuss in more detail what those adjustments actually are. So Mary, can you be able to do that for us today? Because I think parents certainly be very interested in hearing about that. Absolutely, Jackie. Look, thank you for the opportunity to go further into these adjustments, which are look very important for a lot of parents to know about. Um, look, lots of students can use assistive technologies that are actually compatible with the test um, uh, formats. Computers can be permitted for all of the tests or some of the tests if students have disabilities. Um, and these are students who normally would use this kind of adjustment in their usual classroom um, for assessments and other form of work. Also, assistive technology can be used um, if a child has a temporary injury such as a broken arm. And of course, schools do need to um, seek advice and approval um, from from their TAA for this adjustment prior to the testing. So they do, the school does need to submit um, basically an application for the child and permission to use it. Um, the soft, there's also software providing text-to-speech input, which does permit and enable students with disabilities who normally use this type of adjustment to also access um, their own um, responses where it's appropriate. Um, however, students who are using this assistive technology are not allowed to use, obviously, um, spell check, word prediction, um, grammar check, um, et cetera, or any calculators for any maths work. Students can also access black and white print format or the schools can request to have a black line master of the tests. This allows the schools to either reprint the tests on coloured paper for those students who have been diagnosed with Erlen-Scotopic syndrome. So they could have um, a different coloured paper to use, like pale pink or blue or whatever is their prescribed colour. They can also use overlays on top of the exam papers to help them with that visual processing. If students have a visual impairment, then it also can be enlarged. They can actually have a larger print format to assist them with accessing the papers like anyone else in their classroom. Uh, for students who use Braille because of visual impairments, Braille format is also available for all of these exams. Extra time is available for students who need it. Um, five minutes of extra time per half hour is the usual time granted, but in some cases, up to an additional of 15 minutes per half hour can also be provided. There is also um, the possibility of having a support person, and that can be either a teacher or a person who is officially engaged by the school to assist students with disability to access the tests. An Aplan support person can actually do the shading of the bubbles indicated by the student or they can write short responses or answers dictated by the student for the reading, the language conventions or even the numeracy test. So this person is basically the scribe. There is also um, an oral or a sign support person. So students who are deaf or, a ha or have a hearing impairment can actually access oral or sign communication, for example, Auslan. 
the support person must be, of course, skilled and a familiar um, communicating partner with the student and is permitted to read or sign the instructions to all the tests. Now, signing is permitted for only those sections of the test that can be read um, to the students. There are some parts of the test which the student has to read themselves. So the scribe or the, the reader is given very um, distinct instructions of what parts they can sign or read and which ones they cannot. Rest breaks. Now rest breaks are taken, um, when they are taken, the time of the test is actually stopped and then it's resumed on completion of the rest break. Some students who need rest breaks are those who have attentional problems um, or those who have a physical impairment that prevents them from physically maintaining um, a writing or a sitting posture for too long. Um, students, of course, during their, their rest time are not allowed to access um, any other form of um, information. They can't have any extra writing implements, computer or text during their rest breaks. And it's uh, generally recommended that no more than 10 minutes of rest time is taken per half hour of test time granted. Um, so look, these accommodations are really, really important for parents to know about. So they are well informed. So again, when they actually speak to their schools, they know roughly what their choices are to ensure that their students, their, their children, can access the NAPLAN papers equally to their peers without any discrimination. I hope that's helpful to you, Jackie. That's been really helpful, Mary. And, uh, and in terms of um, who makes that final decision about the types of adjustments that are granted to a student, that's held at the school level, isn't it? Absolutely. The school will consult um, with the, the, the body of NAPLAN to ensure that um, these accommodations are appropriate, but the school itself does make the final decision as well, um, and the school knows already which students are receiving some form of accommodations, and generally those same accommodations that the child is receiving in the class for their regular work is then applied to the conditions um, of the NAPLAN testing. Mary, thank you so much for your time today and coming back and explaining in detail all of those accommodations that are available for the NAPLAN. I'm sure that's really helped a lot of parents who've been wondering what on earth an accommodation means and whether or not mm. it might be appropriate for their children and something they should follow up with the school if they haven't already heard. So, Mary, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to our guest speaker. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Want to know more about this podcast and other VPC podcasts? Please visit the VPC website, vicparentscouncil.vic.edu.au and leave a review. We would also welcome you to contact us if you would like to be our guest or if you have a topic around parenting and education. Thank you to Melbourne singer Emma Sidney for her permission to use her soundtrack, Cherish. Until next time, thank you for listening.